Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us this morning. COVID-19 restrictions are slowly being relaxed. Churches are now able to meet with up to 10 people. That still creates a bit of an issue for us at Normanton Christian Fellowship and many other churches. Which 10 do you let come in? So it's too difficult. So what we've decided as a fellowship is to continue church in this same way that we're doing at the moment until all the restrictions are lifted and we can welcome everyone back to church. We'll have a big barbecue or something then. So thanks for your patience with that. Our Wednesday prayer meetings are being done via Zoom. If you're able to join us at 6pm on a Wednesday, just text me or email me and I can send you the meeting ID details. Today, BJ is going to talk to us about another fruit of the Spirit, which is patience. Thanks, BJ. Patience. Sometimes we need to wait for things to happen. One thing God gives us is patience. Patience means waiting calmly, not trying to rush things. Here are some ways that you can be patient. Waiting for dinner. Waiting to go back to school. Waiting until you're old enough to drive. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Being patient is waiting for things calmly. Let's pray to to have patience, okay? Um, dear Jesus, pray that we have patience for this week. Pray that we are all come and do the name, Amen. Thanks, BJ. Today, I've got a really simple message that I hope will cause us to pause and to reflect upon what we do and why we do it. Let me share this story with you. There was a little boy, we'll call him Johnny. He was visiting his grandparents on their farm and he was given a slingshot to play with out in the bush. He practiced out in the bush, but he could never hit the target. But getting a little discouraged, he headed back for dinner. And as he was walking back, he saw grandma's pet duck. Just out of impulse, he let the slingshot fly hit the duck square in the head and killed it. He was shocked and grieved. In a panic, he hid its dead body in a pile of wood, only to see his sister watching. Sally had seen it all, but she said nothing. After lunch the next day, Grandma said, Sally, let's wash the dishes. But Sally said, Grandma, Johnny told me he wanted to help in the kitchen. Then she whispered to him, remember the duck. So Johnny did the dishes. Later that day, Grandpa asked if the children wanted to go fishing. And Grandma said, I'm sorry, but I need Sally to help me make supper. Sally just smiled and said, oh, that's all right, because Johnny told me he wanted to help. She whispered again, remember the duck. So Sally went fishing and Johnny stayed to help. After several days of Johnny doing both his chores and Sally's, he finally couldn't stand it any longer. He came to Grandma and confessed that he had killed the duck. Grandma knelt down, gave him a hug and said, Sweetheart, I know. You see, I was standing at the window and I saw the whole thing. But because I love you, I forgave you. I was just wondering how long you would let Sally make a slave out of you. You know, there's some spiritual implications for that story. Whatever is in your past, whatever wrong things you have done, the devil keeps throwing it up in your face. 
could be lying, cheating, debt, fear, bad habits, hatred, anger, bitterness, poor choices, the list is endless. Whatever it is, you need to know that God was standing at the window and he saw the whole thing. He's seen your whole life. He wants you to know that he loves you and that you're forgiven. He's just wondering how long you'll let the devil make a slave of you. The great thing about God is that when you ask for forgiveness, he not only forgives you, but he forgets. It's by God's grace and mercy that we are saved. Hebrews 8 verse 12 puts it this way, And I will forgive their wickedness, and I will never again remember their sins. Psalm 103 verses 8 to 12 declares this, The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us, nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all of our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. You know, God is at the window. He sees it all. We need to pause and reflect. Think about what guilt and remorse that we've been allowing Satan to manipulate and control our lives with. If we've confessed our wrongdoings to God, that's the end of it. Jesus died on Calvary to take that guilt and shame and burden off of our shoulders forever. Don't keep revisiting the regrets of your past. Look forward to today and the rest of your life as a new person, created in the image of God, released and set free from the burden of sin, able to joyfully praise God for what he's done through his son Jesus Christ in your life. You know, Mike's going to minister to us in song now, and during this song, there's some quiet times. Let's use those quiet moments to reflect, to say we're sorry, and to allow God's Holy Spirit to restore us and to reassure us of our liberation from the bondage of sin in our lives. That's how God will worship you in our spirit and in truth. You are our amazing God, faithful God. You are our Redeemer, our Savior. You're worthy of all our praises. Under your wings, cover me within your mighty hands. When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the soul. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know you are God. Quietness and trust 
When the oceans rise and thunders roll, I will soar with you above the soul. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know you are God. When the oceans rise and thunders roll, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know you are Thanks, Mike. We're just going to close now in a word of prayer. Would you bow with me? Thank you, Father, that we can come to you, confess our wrongdoings, and know that you are gracious and loving enough to forgive us. Thank you, Father, that you sent your son Jesus to pay the price for our sins when he hung on the cross of Calvary and once and forever removed the burden of sin and the death sentence that came with it off of our shoulders and onto his. Thank you, Father, that you have sent your Holy Spirit to empower us and to guide us so that we don't continue to make the same mistakes in our lives and that we can live in victory and joy, showing your love and patience to everyone we meet during our journey through this life. Be with us today and during this coming week. Would you keep us safe and strong until we meet again to praise and glorify you once more? In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you, church. Have a great day.
See you later.